Right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the School Podcast. Hey! Patrick Kenny is here with us today. Hello. Patrick, tell us about yourself. Well, I am Patrick Kenny. Yes. I've been here since kindergarten, so that's the 13 years oh. of my life I've been at this school. It's been quite fun for most of them. Mm. Um, yeah, what subjects do you do? I do English with Miss Davies, yes. economics with Miss Bantford, and modern history with Miss Bantford. Uh, business and personal finance with Mrs. Crisp. Yes. Um, what else do I do? I do maths for Miss Edwards. Is that methods or applications? That's applications. Okay, yes. I'm not that good to do methods. Neither am I, don't worry. Uh, I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah. And history of Mr. Ken Llewell. Oh, no, Ms. no, Ms. Ms. Bantford. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. um, so you were in the production recently. Yeah, I played yeah. the character of Cogsworth at Stuck Up Clock. So he's a clock. Yeah. I haven't seen Beauty and the Beast in a while, but... So what did you do? Were you just... I was supposed to be a very angry clock that was very sarcastic all the time yes. to everyone else, which is quite easy for me to do. Is that just your natural self? Yeah, yeah. I was typecasted, really. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Where did you, what did you base it off of? The me. original film, the animated one, or the live-action remake? With I based it off the animated one. The live-action one, all it had was Ian McKellen saying about three words. So I went with the old one. I think. Um, yeah, I do want to say something. I think that's yeah. my favourite one as well. I used to watch that as a kid with my auntie and my nan. Did you sing? Oh, uh, I did have to sing actually. Uh, I didn't know until I was there that I had to sing, but that was enjoyable to do. I'll do it again. Are you a natural singer? No, not no, really. No. What oh, song could you have to sing? I had to sing "Human Again." Human again. Yeah, I had to yell about how much I hated the candlestick Lumiere. Which was quite fun to do. Who played Lumiere? That was Josie in Year Nine. Okay, yeah, Josie. Yeah, right. she she was un, she was so good. I think she was. How she, oh, her movements. Yeah. She could really just take on that character really well. Perfect. I was so happy to work with her during this who thing. Played, who played Gaston? That was Luke Ackerman. Really? He was so good as Gaston. He had the crowd laughing. We all loved it when he was doing the little. What do you call this? Chicken dance? No, 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 no. The, the thrusting. He would thrust <laughs> towards the audience and yeah. everyone would be killing themselves laughing. But Luke's quite not muscular, I believe. Yeah, that's why we got him to wear baggy clothes. Oh, so right. it gave yeah. the illusion yeah, of say, him being muscular. Because he's not the most muscular dude, no. that's for sure. We got a tall menacing figure and thought, we'll yeah, just, yeah. just paint it. We'll get, we'll get some clothes on. <laughs> How did he do with the song? The He was really well with the songs. All the songs he could... Sing them really well, perfect, nearly every time. Nearly was, every time? Nearly every time. Is there an exception there? Is no, it's just during rehearsals, yeah. it was good. But during the main songs, he would hit it every time. Perfect. Nice. Who was um, Beast? That was William Brooke in year 10, I think he's in. He yeah. was, he's not usually the one, I know, I know him personally, he's not usually a person to be so angry all the time. Yeah. It can go on weird rants, but... That's okay. Yeah. But he, he was good. We, we all enjoyed him. He would crack some jokes during the thing. And who was Belle? <coughs> Belle was Lauren Marsh in my year, year yeah. 11. She is an excellent singer. I've, seen her, I've heard her sing so many times. It always takes your breath away when she sings. Yeah, I think I've heard her once before, maybe. Yeah, she is very she good. Yeah. so good. She's yeah. so talented. Yeah. So um, overall, how well did you think the production went? It went so well. The, yeah. This new director that we have, Mr. Robbo, yeah. he knows what he's doing, this guy. I went and saw God of Carnage oh, yeah. when that was out. Uh, that got me, William, because we went, and my friend Alex, we went and watched that. We had to do a standing ovation at that one. The yeah. first one for a while at this school, I think. It was just so good. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just really revitalised the school's arts programmes. It's been such an honour to work with him. That's with yeah. over this thing I think more people go into drama and that with him around um, so you are a student of history yes, yes I do like a good book about history who is your favourite historical figure well, of all time mine is Mr Stanley Baldwin the Earl of Stockton you probably don't know I him I have no idea who that <laughs> is he was the Prime Minister of England in the, pre, in the, the interwar period of England he was the three time Prime Minister so between 1918 and like... 1919 and 30... 1990, sorry. Yeah, yeah. he yeah. was last 
um, 1936. 36? Why him? Yeah, why the, him? What's the, so good about him? The only reason I like him is that, that he got a king of England, one of the most powerful figures at the time, yeah. to abdicate and to leave office. He was able to force the king of England to leave, in, really? to leave England and exile to Canada and to America. And that's purely why you... I just right. like how someone who's... That was a pet... King, King George, right? No, that was King Edward. Edward, Edward VIII, I think Edward it was. Really? Yeah. Edward VIII. He was able to... And it was after that. George, George. VI. And then it was George. And then George died. And then, and then, and then Elizabeth, Elizabeth yeah. took over. Yeah. yeah. The only reason I like him is that he got the whole British Parliament, really, to stand with him and to kick yeah. the king out of the country. Because the king wanted to marry an American, which at the time was looked Ooh. down upon. Yeah. And this American was already divorced, and the Church uh, of England said no. Why do you want to marry this American? Because he loved it. Just, love. just love. purely love. He took. <laughs> he put love above country for can, some reason. Can you blame that though? I mean, love yeah, country. you can, but you ha- kind of have to put the nation forward if you're in a role like that. True, and true, true. I guess he was able to get. Was him. he a charming so, bloke or who? Uh, Stanley. Yeah, Stanley. Oh, not really. Not really. He was quite. Him, no, he was quite. <laughs> was quite firm but he yeah. was good he looks but and looks another thing oh <laughs> yeah another thing that stanley bolton was able to do yeah. was this king edward the eighth was he liked the nazis a bit he used to do state visits to the nazis a lot so he, and after the war they dug up some files on him yeah. and he used to visit hitler a lot and really liked hitler's way of running things wait was this baldwin or the king this was the stanley king bolton. edward edward liked this this is edward sorry uh, Edward VIII was oh, the one who liked yeah. the Nazis. All oh, right, okay, got you. But Stanley Bolton didn't have his faults too. He liked selling aircraft to the Nazis when he was prime minister, and he was the yeah. one who started the appeasement program. Was it the Americans who sold arms to the Germans? No, who was it? I can't remember, but yeah, no, nah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, no. Sorry, <laughs> I, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So Stanley Baldwin. Yeah, he was able to get the country with a coalition with the Labour Party yeah. to get um, England out of the, well, Great Britain out of the Depression as well and That's stabilise the empire. Yeah. So that, I find that interesting as well. What's your favourite? My favourite. Oh, is it purely just, like, political figures? No, or we can including, go any, like, anyone in history. and artists and... We'll do musicians Mus- as well. Oh, I don't know, I haven't really thought about this. Ah... Uh, uh, can we come back to me? Can mind me Gordon Ramsay? Yours can be Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. He is a classic yes. Gordon Ramsay. Oh, Gordon Ramsay. his Gordon Ramsay is the best. Why are you lo- Kitchen Nightmares. Like- Kitchen Nightmares. Yeah. Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen, yes. And the the Hotel Hell. And <sighs> his show, the, the F Word. The F Word, yeah. And it's just called The F Word. It is so good. I haven't seen it that is- one. Oh, is that a censored F Word or is it like. No, it's, it's the called F-word. The F Word, yeah. Jamie Oliver's pretty cool, in my no, opinion. No, no. Really. Gordon like, Ramsay to no. Jamie Oliver. The Gordon Ramsay would win Jamie every Oliver. time. Yeah. You want to cook your things in under 30 minutes? 15 minutes or less meals. Yeah, 30 yeah. minute meals, 15 minute meals. Really put, yeah. yeah. I love those books. The Naked Chef. He's just so he's just so energetic and enthusiastic about his job. You know what Gordon Jamie Ramsay Oliver is? is? Just like, do you know, you want yeah. to know what Jamie Oliver is? Yes, I do. The most glorified home show. Most yeah, he's the yes. most glorified yes. home chef. Well, Gordon Ramsay. Gordon he- Ramsay, on the other hand, Michelin star restaurants. Given he so hasn't, he Oliver. hasn't been the head chef of his own restaurant for about twenty years. Yes, mind yes. you that. Yes, and neither has and Jamie Oliver's restaurants actually went out of business. Yeah, so that's pretty quirky. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> uh, that is pretty quirky. I'll <laughs> but Jamie Oliver's the best. No way. Gordon Ramsay is such a classic. I don't know. Think about someone who's... Come on, cool. anyone. Kurt Cobain keeps coming to my head, but I can't really talk about that. Cause I have no idea who Kurt Cobain is. He was the lead is. singer and guitarist of the band Nirvana. Have you heard Nirvana? No. You know that song smells like Teen Spirit? Nah. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know many songs. All right. Um, well, he, he was pretty much this guy who, like, out of nowhere, made something of himself. Um, yeah, he was... What are you talking about? No, my, my most influential person. Yeah, I just I just really liked his um songwriting, his voice as well. He's like, he's kind of weird, but he made being weird okay. Like he was bullied in school. You know, he would hang out with, you know, a homosexual kid, which would be you know looked down upon during those times. And you know, he was very artsy and creative, but 
he didn't let that um, those that bullying stop him from being who he was, and he kind of made that whole kind of lifestyle and you know um, hobby okay and cool. And that's I think that really right. appeals to a lot of people in this day and age. Anyway, I mean, it was sad how he went out, but uh-huh. yes, that probably wasn't the best answer. But uh, <laughs> Franklin D. Roosevelt. I don't know if you learned. Have you learned about that yet? Franklin D. But Roosevelt. he was a pretty cool guy. What He's can I boys. say about? He him? is for the boys. He's for the boys. No, I have to disagree with yeah. you. My what? favorite president is Herbert Herbert Hoover. Hoover. No. Herbert Hoover no. is the best president the United States ever had. Okay. No, he's the worst. Dude. What prosperity was just around the corner. Okay, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> it was just around the corner, everyone. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have to ask everyone to take it down just a little bit. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. You're too excited here. Yeah. Herbert Hoover. I'll put you in a. a I'm in a Hooverville. Yeah. Oh ben no. Look, look, that wasn't his fault. <laughs> 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 to get the benefit of doubt, who was the guy before him? Um, Easy Cal. Calvin uh, yeah, Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge. He kind of le- gave Hoover America that was in a bad state. And then the Great Depression came along, and yeah, it wasn't really Hoover's fault, and he just kind of inherited yeah. this terrible but state of affairs. How can you say he's your favourite? But how can you say he's your favourite? Yeah. I'm not even being unironically. All what Franklin D. Roosevelt did, really, after when Hoover left office, yeah. was just building on Hoover's programs to get out the Depression. Did Hoover actually achieve in getting America out of the Depression? Look, he Depression didn't get a second there. term, did he? <laughs> he did. Maybe if he got a second did, term. Did he? I doubt it. Did he? Franklin went in there, right? He says, I'm fixing it. Emergency powers, right? Yeah, but guess who, you, guess who else used emergency Adolf powers? Hitler. Mr. Emperor Palpatine himself, <laughs> oh, no. Ad- Adolf Hitler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but... But the, the New wait, Deal, the second New Deal, alphabet agencies. Oh, another that thing. That man single-handedly turned around. He the made States people of paint walls, but in made the post it more offices. dictatorship and took away freedom. He made taxes oh, higher for the American people. Argument. We're oh. making this argument. Look, taxes theft. <laughs> taxes theft. Don't pay your taxes. Don't pay your taxes theft. I mean, <sighs> look, I do oh, you think you could make fr- the argument that America didn't recover from the Great Depression. Until World War Two, really. It really was just World War Two that kicked him out. They were still kicking the bubble because when he at was, at least he was trying. At least Hoover wasn't trying. Hoover was Hoover, trying. Hoover, Hoover, Hoover listened to his Hoover board of directors. Was, I okay? have to argue that Hoover adopted the um, policy of what's it called isolationism. Yeah, I think when that you, was the Republican Party policy, where you let the people solve the problem themselves. That, that was, was a free his whole market. thing. That was a free market. But as the president of a country that's in a great depression, in a recession, you can't really. Well, we can look on. Them. We can look on with that with hindsight. Back then, that was what they did. True, hindsight does play a role. Yes, yeah. I, I will accept that. Back then, know. that's what's what Franklin they did. D. Roosevelt had a podcast. He did. He had fireside, fireside, fireside shots. Fireside shots. He yeah. Fireside shots. He did. He did. Um, that was really propaganda. I reckon. At least he was just having good relations with the people. At least yeah. Herbert Herbert Hoover didn't mow down people who were trying to do a peaceful protest. I mean, Look, he listened to the dedicated general, General MacArthur, okay, to do that. That was nothing to do with it. Hoover may have signed the document to say to do it, but that's all he did. He got General MacArthur to. How would you feel if you were a soldier mm-hmm. and you'd come home from war? From, the, from World War, war I, one, The greatest, the most detrimental the war the world has war. seen yet. And, this was the and you just want your money that you, you deserve. You were promised. You were promised. Yeah, you were promised Hoover... the money in 1944. <laughs> this is like ni- in the 30s sometime. No, I think in the no, early 30s, late 20s sometime. Probably. So they didn't really get their payment because it wasn't due to them yet. Was, wasn't it? Was it? I swear it was. Yeah, it was. was, it, was it, no, I it's didn't when think they we, came back from the war. No, it was, after, it was, it was their pension war. after the war. So what? they got it paid out. They got their pension paid out in the 40s or something, I, I, I believe. Really? They, they couldn't get it after they, in like the 20s? No, no, no. Oh. No, no, right. that was... I'm Googling it. We need to get to the bottom of this. When were we soldiers needed. meant to get paid after World War One? From the Americans. Conscripts were still... Uh, talk. Talk. Um, yeah. So Herbert Hoover, huh? Yeah. Nah, I don't feel it, man. No. Oh, really? Know. He was only following the Republican Party's policies. Okay, I understand that, but why would that... 
make him your favorite president of the USA. <laughs> There's so many better choices to choose from. I could have said anyone, but Herbert. Choose. I really believe that Herbert Hoover had it. <laughs> he was going for it. I can't if it wasn't that. for the stock market crash, yes. and then the Great Depression, Herbert Hoover would have just been one of those presidents. That's such a, that's such a naive thought. That's so. Though. That's that's a hypothetical. That's like saying. <laughs> If, if Kurt Cobain didn't die, Nirvana would be the greatest rock band of all time. I, I know, I just feel nostalgia for if Herbert If only Hoover. the Nazis had made the, the, the mini missiles that could go like across into the water and the, the, the massive super tanks, they would have won, dude. It would have been easy. <laughs> if only, if only they had the 40 billion the people in Germany, things. they could have won. <laughs> they could have won. <laughs> if only they had the orbital cannon, they would have won. <laughs> if they'd just given them two more years. How do you feel about um, John D. Rockefeller? John D. Rockefeller. The guy I who reckon he was standard oil. Yeah. yeah. Did he deserve it? I reckon he did. With the policies that were on that time of America, Wasn't he, he was he was legally allowed to do what he, he did. He was, but until, and he the, was until the government came in and made a new law, and then they were the like, "You can't do it anymore." Me, yeah. I made yeah. this sick new law when but I see it. The thing when they did that <laughs> is all they did was make him richer because he got shares in all the companies they um, dis- oh. dismantled Standard you know, Oil into. All those companies, the one company they all dis- dismantled, mm-hmm. it's like it got dismantled into six. Yeah. I think at the current moment, it both. Three of those have merged into one, and now there's plans of it merging back into one. Standard it's oil like the, coming back, the boys. Year old, like, <laughs> return well, around. Oh, it's actually, wow. it, it, over time, they've just merged back into one. It's so good. See, government policies don't work. Didn't he own like 91% of the oil industry? It was I think something so, crazy. 91%, yeah. yeah. That, that is insane. Wild. Yeah. That dude's actually a bit of a beast. Oh, another thing with Herbert Hoover, which yeah. makes him so okay, good. Okay. He yeah. helped Belgium during World War I. He was sent over there. Belgium were neutral, though. No, they weren't. No, no Belgium got were, invaded were, yeah, by the were, Kaiser. I'm sorry, I was, I was thinking about Switzerland. My bad. Sorry. Kaiser Why Wilhelm invaded. Belgium? Yeah, who cared about Belgium? The Americans did, because they're <laughs> the ones who sent him to Belgium. <laughs> Even though he was there for, like, a couple nice. months. Belgium's like, oh, you're cute, you know. He but. helped. And when he, in, when he was in his 80s after World War yeah. II, he was he did, I think it was health, food. So the people of England and some of the colonies of um, Britain wouldn't go hungry. Yeah. So he was sent there by the Republicans. I feel like that doesn't outweigh the fact that they, in his time in office, they witnessed. The but worst none of that was his fault. Be fair, none of that was to caused be fair, by none him. None of it was caused by him. It's he was just there. Where the and issue the... lies is how well did he deal with it? And most historians would argue that he didn't deal with it very he well. He just happened to be holding the steering wheel as yeah. the, ice, as as the car crashed. crashed. As the, iceberg. the car was <laughs> the car had no brakes. He just happened to be at the wheel. That's how I see he it. He was the captain of the Titanic. Yeah. It was like and ten minutes iceberg, out, yeah. and the As person like, who guided it was like, "I'm gonna go I'm to, gonna go to the, the toilet." toilet. <laughs> and just cover for me for ten minutes, and yeah, he grabs hold of him and exactly. bang hits it. I Is thought it? that they were just they hit the iceberg because they were trying to push ahead of schedule to make it seem like. A no, just, I heard that uh, rumor, but it's all false. All them. Oh. It's just what the movie said. That's, a, t- that's a terrific movie. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is a good I movie, love but that it's fraught full with things that are Yeah, wrong I with thought it was because, you know, they're trying to get there quicker. Isn't quick that over. conspiracy? That's I, all I heard conspiracy one that theory. It, the, the area they were going through was actually a, like a military zone, and there had been like submarine tests. Oh, that's that what area. I heard, and it was actually yeah. the Kaiser who sunk <laughs> the Titanic. I thought I no one could own the ocean. No, there's like, like spaces you get like, of maritime. Like, you get like yes, but those were made after World War Two, and this is World War One at the moment. So this is 1912. I, I think the Titanic was 1912. 12. Song, yeah. 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 I, like I love that movie. Not cute. 2020. I was no, never allowed to watch that movie. Why not? I don't know. Is it because of the intimate scenes? It was probably because the of hand that. The oh, hand at the. Oh, oh I just did the star start seat. Car start seat. Oh, 1912. 1912. Yeah. 2022. You guys hyped for the next one? Part two, electric boogaloo. Oh, isn't Clive Palmer <laughs> building the Titanic? <laughs> is he is gave he? funding to it. Yeah. Yeah, legit. They're making yes. it in California. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, if you don't work the first time, try again a hundred years, years later. <laughs> hey, at least with global warming, there's not going to be many icebergs oh, yeah. to crash into. <laughs> See, yeah, we, us humans have just gone no you to nature. Yeah. We've done this iceberg We've been thing. holding a grudge. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you took our boat, we'll take your entire iceberg. <laughs> Uh, How are we going for time, Nathan? Uh, we're at like 20 minutes. Right, Nathan, you guys want to know who my favourite president is? I do. Who? Theodore Roosevelt, because he had an appearance in Nightmare Museum. 
He, that, did. That, he, he was, was Robin Williams. You do realise he was dead for nearly 100 years yeah, when yeah, that yeah, happened. Yeah, I know, but... Is there any other <laughs> he reason? Appeared. No. Is it purely just because of that? <laughs> yep. Also, his nickname was Teddy. Teddy Roosevelt. I, I would get behind Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, but that's he went a, on safaris and shot everything. He did. He lived did he do anything? Home. Wasn't he one of the, um... Return uh, to... No, not Return to Normalcy. That was Warren G. Hyde. He, um... Oh, what was his policies about? Uh, uh, the big stick policy. The big, big, the big stick. stick. Diplomacy? Yeah, the big and, stick yeah. diplomacy. But you see, with him, he only got into office because his president got assassinated. I can't remember his president's name. Uh, let me find it. Uh, it's not Taft. Well, it's not yeah, it's William H. Taft, isn't it? Was no, he, uh, no. He, William he, McKinley. 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 He only got into office because McKinley that. died, so he was elected into office. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, he probably wouldn't have got even got a second term if that didn't happen, because no one would have knew what to have. Not many vice presidents become president, only really if their president gets assassinated that they can become president. Yeah. Biden is trying. Joe Biden. Yeah, he signed oh, Joe up. Joe Biden's yeah. never gonna get in. <laughs> too old. Why not? He's like ninety four. He's kind of popular. What ninety four? He's gonna no, die. Well, he's good. like ninety four. He's I just think, really um, old. Bernie's and it, going for it again. Bernie's he's like eighty yeah. something. Is he far left in his views? Yeah. He's a socialist. Socialist, yeah. Mm. yeah. Just like Mr. That's Kennedy. why people don't vote for him, but... <laughs> I know, I've heard some of his stuff. It sounds like he wants to introduce healthcare. Like we oh, have here. Yeah. Because they don't have that at Oh, home. they don't have public healthcare? No, no they no. don't. It's... I think they have Obamacare, but it's not that good. Yeah. No. Yeah, and didn't Trump reverse Obamacare? Yeah. yeah. It, it, I don't think that was that good to begin with. No, you uh, don't name a whole Medicare system apparently, after yourself. Apparently, <laughs> a lot of people like, had the opportunity to take it, but they didn't take it because it had Obama in the name. Like, wow. Yeah, they didn't want to take because it had Obama. Well, that's a bit petty, it. isn't Which it? I, well, I mean, you know, so, I can't agree with that. The dude who I didn't vote for, and now I'm going to take like money from him and stuff. True. Well, that's the whole point about democracy, isn't it? That you accept. How do you feel about democracy? Not, is no. it flawed <laughs> or is it a good? I think every system's flawed. I would agree with you there. But I think yeah. we've chosen the best out of a bad bunch. Democracy. Mm. I yeah. like constitutional monarchies. Constitutional monarchies. I reckon we need a good old. How monarch. about socialism and a socialist state? Socialism, no thanks, not for I me. I don't know the constitutional monarchy. I don't understand why we have the British family now. What now? Yeah, we don't <laughs> need them. Oh, it's well. either they got the queen has all the power, or she doesn't have nothing. That's what I think. Well, well she does all have all the power still right now. She just doesn't use it. She could dissolve. Well, she doesn't have that much power because of that. What's that thing? They call Magna, Carta? Carta? That Magna Carta. Magna Carta. What? What? The Magna Carta. Oh right. <laughs> the Governor General. <laughs> <laughs> the Governor General. <laughs> oh, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. The if, Magna if, Carta. If, if we should the, revert the Magna Carta. If, if the head of the royal family has all the power, then how can? Edward the Eighth got kicked out because she doesn't have power. But well, Edward the Eighth, no, the prime power. minister. No, the because Parliament told Edward the Eighth to um, told Edward the Eighth to stop doing what he's doing, and Edward the Eighth refused because he was replacing most of the people in the House of Lords with his friends and that, which wasn't really right. So Stanley Baldwin got most of the his cabinet to resign if the king didn't leave. And in that time, if the king was not allowed to intervene in the political business yeah. at the time, because that would have looked on as breaking the Magna Carta and all that sort of documents from before. So if that happened, there probably would have been a civil war or something in England, because yeah. that's the king doing a direct intervention into democracy. And that would just turn into a dictatorship. And that's just a no-go by yeah. the Magna Carta. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. The royal family is a tourist attraction. Change yeah. my mind. At the they, moment, I reckon you're right. I'd agree. It actually but, is. I mean, they don't do much. They don't do anything. The queen kind of, kind of the Well, queen, actually, they do a lot of charity and whatnot. Mm. True. And they bring a lot of money for tourism. Meghan Markle and, what's his face, Prince Harry. Harry yeah. I mean, yeah, they are a tourist attraction. Oh, and also the new, the new ones that just got married, the, t uh, the mm. dude who just got married to the Prince American woman. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Yeah. yeah. It's an American insurgent. Oh my goodness, Stanley Bolt. Stanley Bolden would have got everyone to quit, okay? I mean, Finally, America has now instilled itself oh in the royal family. Is that a good thing it's or bad treason, thing? then. Uh, well, I mean, treason? <laughs> you, you don't like it? Uh, personally, well, no. Well, if no. it's treason, if like, some of the head members start spontaneously Maybe we need to change our traditionalist, uh, traditionalist views. And spice up the royal family. I can just need a new. Well, cool, but family. then what's the point of a royal family? One country. Yeah. 
And I don't think I think a royal family is supposed to be just the representing well, that of that country. Wrong with that, but yeah, yes, just nothing English, wrong with that. Yeah, but I guess theoretically, yeah. could we usurp the crown? Could we what? Can we walk in right? Mm. We kill the queen mm. and we claim the throne. No, it would have no, to, you'd have to have royal lineage. Have to call the entire bloodline. No, you usurp the crown, so you walk <coughs> in and you take the crown for yourself. You need and then a, if no one you else need objects, to have a following. you'd exactly. probably you'd probably have to do that and get parliament's like some game permission. Of, yes, like some Game of Thrones type stuff. Like you oh. walk in and you just take uh, it. If this was ten something or other, <laughs> maybe ten sixty six, you could. What I'm saying, can we if do you, that now? If you were a Norman general in ten sixty six, you probably could. But now, no, <laughs> I don't think you can because you would have to get parliament. And I don't think parliament would. Have, yeah, what's would the put point anyway? Well, if you the queen the nice can't house. interfere in the. The parliament's I think business. she's can the parliament not interfere with the queen's business, therefore, you have political <laughs> immunity. The queen does have political immunity, yeah. So, what we're gonna do? Steal the crown? Bam. No, we're, political we're, we're immune. immune. We're immune to pol- <laughs> I don't. I don't it, think we're, it's the crown that gives you the power. I think it's the, the impact. You are. The queen, theoretically, could kill anyone she wants. And she'd get away with she it. She'd get away with it. Let, let's be honest, she probably does, right? Takes yeah. Out political opposite. Hey, no, not Princess political. Diana. Oh, hey. oh hey. I don't know if you can joke I'm, about I'm hearing that. you over hey. there. That's a conspiracy theory for another day. I that mean, is actually to consider to talk about this very briefly. She did not like Diana because uh, she, she was, was the first person to divorce um, a member of the royal family. Of course, Prince Charles. George, Charles, J- James, Charles. Charles. They're all the same. <laughs> 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 really, <laughs> they are. Yeah. Oh, that. James, Wait, sorry, you just said James Charles and I just said hey sisters James <laughs> Charles a little intertextual reference for the teens there um yeah uh, no she didn't kill Diana I mean, no I think well, if you put anything don't even joke or talk about it that's horrible that's, that's, that's horrible that's horrible I, I, I like Diana I thought Diana was nice she was lovely humanitarian uh, work yeah. uh, what were we talking about uh, princess of Wales conspiracy theories Oh. Alright, next topic. Yeah. What are we doing? Next topic. Um, oh, I was going to kind of rip into one of the problems of capitalism if you guys wanted to. Or if, if you want to. No, if you want to talk to. Did you? Or? The problems of capitalism? Come yeah, on. What, What's the problem of the, the capitalist system? Do you want to hold system? hands and go down the, this rabbit hole with us? One of the, okay, one of the problems <laughs> of capitalism <laughs> is that. Take the blue pill? The, in terms of its economic uh, holdings, mm-hmm. one of the values. Of capitalism, yeah, mm-hmm. of e- in the economics life, transfer into human life, and what I mean by that is, in an economic system that's capitalist nature, if you are unemployed, you are seen of being no value, because obviously you can't contribute to the, the economy by mm. buying stuff and making goods, and you know that's fair enough. Why wouldn't you be seen? However, that, that kind of o- overlaps into your normal life, and people who are unemployed are looked down upon. Yes, because would, they're not helping so. society, are they? Exactly, the but they are still valuable and worth and have worth in other ways, such but as it, their emotional connections to people, their relationships. Just because they are unemployed doesn't mean that they, they have no worth as a person. That's one of the flaws. From personal what if experience. you're a businessman who wants to hire someone and you see someone unemployed? You'll then have. they have then value obviously, in that Obviously, person. that's one way of looking. Yes, of course. And I'm then just they saying, say, I need I think you in a capitalist system, when people... Um, get jobs in that. I think they're helping the wider society with that. And I think, if, yes. I think when you're unemployed, you can see if I'm thinking, you're not helping the wider society. Of course, yes. So but I think you still have worth as a person. Yeah, right? you still have worth as a person. Think, you're just not helping the wider society. I think this is Karl Marx's criticism of capitalism. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what he thinks or thought rather. Yeah, but Karl Marx was so. Yeah, we can't compare stuff to what Karl Marx wrote about. I mean, and that kind of transfers over to how we view general students in that there's kind of this whole stigma that I hate getting I, I absolutely hate getting political but there's a whole stigma that general students are less or no worth because they aren't doing ATAR and getting a degree I, I s- simply disagree a- ATAR students and general students I think they should be counted the same I, I, just, I agree with you as just well. because just ATAR saying, yeah, students yeah. want to do maybe further education or something I don't think that undermines general students of, yeah, of course. I, of course not. I'm not saying that it does. I'm just saying that I think there's that view out there. But okay, whatever. Yeah. All, All right. right. Um, We're at 30 minutes. 30 so minutes. Okay. You can do whatever you want for the next 10 All right. minutes. 10 seconds on the phone. <laughs> do you want anything? All right. Let me say something. We can get into the English. Yeah, that's, mm. my, my next yeah, point exactly. was you can still, of course, do that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. That's what the... Yeah.
capital what was it communist manifesto said can students can get to university <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, of course. And yeah. they look down upon them because you're not doing ATAR yeah. and going to, you know, yeah. I'd rather not have this stress. And I feel like that kind of stems from a whole capitalist view of viewing the world. And, you know, and because, you know, you go to the university, get a degree, get a job, you know, but anyway, whatever. 10 second fun fact. Mike, this is Patrick, do you know how this game works? Yes, oh, don't worry. I've watched this show every, every time. All right. So, um, alright, let's just get so, into it. Alright, Dean, start. Um, I wish I could sing better. <laughs> so I did a bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish my hair was curlier. Uh, my mother is Rwandan. That was an actual fact. <laughs> <laughs> it was an actual fact. That was worse. That was just wishes we had. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the word fact. What, what fact are you on about? That was just wants and needs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's kind of a fact from yours saying that you want it to be curlier. But I don't even that, want it to be curlier. No, that means, I just pe- that means people know that your hair's curly. But your, your mum's Rwandan. Mm. Um, I don't know yeah. if we can talk about this because it's too personal, but. No, yeah. When was the Rwandan genocide? That was in the 90s, and that's when she had to was leave she, Rwanda. Yeah, was she yeah. there for that? Wow. Yeah, she was, and that's why she had to escape yeah. to get to Australia. Wow, that was crazy. Yeah. What caused it? What, the Rwandan genocide? No, um, it's kind of, is, isn't it the conflict between the two tribes? We had to yes, the there was, when the... Yeah. Jump, uh, okay, let's go all the way back to the 1800s <laughs> with Belgium then. Right, let's do it. When Belgium first colonised the, the the Congo in Heart, Africa... Heart of Darkness. Belgium, Congo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. There was the tribes, the Tutsis and... Uh, what was it? The Hutus. Hutus. The Hutus. Hutu, yeah. And I think the Tutsis were taller and more pale of skin than the Hutus. Yeah. And that seemed them as, in the capitalist system, the Hutus had their... Um, was it the, the Hutus? The Hutus and the Tutsis. The Tutsis had all the cattle and really the upper class sort of area. Yeah. And Just when the, the Belgians went there, these, these systems that the, the tribes had were, were interconnected. You could, you know, you could become a Hutu, you could yeah. become a Tutsi. Yeah. But when the Belgians got there and put passports and uh, passports and all that in, identification papers, you were stayed in your social role. So then there became this kind of resentment towards each each place. Yeah. And when um, when I think one of, I think it was given to I think that part was given to the Germans as one of the colonies from Bismarck when they gave um, the colonies to the Kaiser, is that was really cemented in. Yeah. And then <clears throat> after World War One, uh, this I'm not sure if this is yeah. After World War One, it was given back to Belgium yeah. for the war, and that was stamped down even more. And during the 60s, the 1960s, yes. when Belgium, when the UN forced Belgium to decolonize, yeah. the Belgium Congolese, uh, no, the Rwandans had to choose a political system, mm-hmm. and they choose a pre- and they chose a presidency. Yeah. And this was the first time because since the Tutsis were the lower people, yeah. didn't weren't many of them. Yeah. They were the upper class, but in a presidential elected system, the who the is it Hutus? Yeah. The Hutus who were mass of them could elect their own president. This was the first time the Hutus got any power. Right. So then when they got in, it yeah. turned into a bit like South Africa with the apartheid. The um the Tutsis were looked at as a down upon. And I'm not sure about the the um, what the specifics, but the president was assassinated. Yeah. Uh, the president of Rwanda was assassinated, yeah. and the Hutu, Hutu, Hutu? Yeah. the Hutu government clamped down on Tutsis after the assassination, and which broke into a civil war, which um, the Tutsis were found guilty for it, yeah. and were sent to an exterminations, were sent to camps to be exterminated yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, fun fact: the French helped. Because the French apparently do all that sort of stuff and help with the ex- with help, you know, supplying and all that. Oh, there you go. A history lesson. So it began with the assassination of a president, which created like power imbalance with mm. the two things, and then mm. just escalated and escalated and, until the Rwandan Patriotic Front shot everything down. There is one question. Yeah. Um, I haven't done it for it's a while. really personal uh, it is actually personal, personal. yeah uh, if you can be any component of an aircraft 
what aircraft component would you be and why? Oh my goodness. This is, this is, you know. Oh, I have a question as well. Oh. Hmm. It's probably the hardest question of today. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I would probably be the black box. That's a, that's a popular pick. Yeah, that's mm. popular said that. Yeah, the black box or the bathroom. Why the bathroom? In my opinion, the bathroom on a plane has been the most dirtiest and filthiest place I've ever been. But they have to I said I'd be the pretty toilet. disgusting. <laughs> there. But yeah. how crazy is it to be able to take a number two on on a plane, thousands I, of feet above the ground? I would never dare take that's a number pretty two. Crazy in my dare. opinion, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. dangerous. That's, no, that's, that's, that's risky dare. business. I'm not oh, touching that toilet. Did you plane. hear about what happened on Space Camp? No. When we were flying to Sydney, yeah. there was a fault with our plane, yeah. and our plane started hurtling towards Earth, <laughs> started falling. Actually? Actually, yep, yeah, there was an air conditioning fault with our plane, with our Qantas plane, yeah. which caused the autopilot to turn on and to plummet to 4,000 feet. Huh. Really? Wow. Mm. So we were all on it, we were all, all sitting there, we didn't know what was happening. Yeah. There was a bit of lack, of lack of air, I think it was, so we're all getting a bit drowsy as, you know, as that sort of thing happens. Yeah. And all of a sudden we're starting to plummet down. And Mr Adler, who was behind me, said, you don't have to panic, the little, you know, Pains, whatever, the masks haven't come down. The moment the masks come down, you can start panicking. And about three seconds later, the masks come down. And Mr. Adler's holding onto the chairs like this. We're all putting the mask on. It was quite funny. And knowing me, I, I had fallen asleep by that point. And this um, kid next to me turned, the, um, this kid who was sitting next to me turns to me and says, are we going to die? And I turned to him and said, shut up. <laughs> shut up. And yeah, we survived. It was just an air conditioning fault. Wow. Nice. Mm. Right, is there any um, year 11s you want to shout out? Oh, I'll shout out to my friend Alex Dalton. Shout out Alex Dalton. And William Brooke, because he's cool. Shout and out he, William Brooke. And he played the beast in he the production. He did play the beast in the production. Yeah. All right, awesome. All right. Thank you for coming on, Patrick. Well, that has been you. an After Hours podcast. Thank you for listening. Thank and you. yeah. Tune in next week. Bye. Later.